Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In this lesson, we will introduce how to use parts for modeling. When we use parts for modeling, if the model is complex, then we will use a lot of parts for it, this makes it troublesome when we want to move the model. For example, a tree is in the scene, which is made up of many parts. If we want to move the tree, we first need to select all the parts that make up the tree in the game resources view and then move it. This is clearly very inconvenient, and there is a high chance that we might miss a part. For this kind of situation, the editor provides the group operation. We select all these parts in the game resources view, then click the right mouse button, and choose group in the small pop-up window, or you can click the group button in the top menu bar. We will see that all the parts are placed under a parent node called model. This allows us to move the entire model with the model node. This is the group operation provided by the editor. The group is equivalent to putting multiple parts together in a box. And the box is the model, the parts inside are still the same as the original. But the box is not a part, so the model does not have the physics properties of the part, nor can it edit the events. You can only use the move, rotate, scale, and other operations on the model. If there are multiple models, we can also modify the name for each model to make it easier to distinguish between what model each model is. If you want to cancel the group, select the model in the game resources view, click the right mouse button and choose ungroup, or you can click ungroup in the menu bar. Note that when using the group for modeling, be sure to click the anchored option for all the parts in the model, otherwise, the model will fall apart after running. Next, we will learn to use the operations of union, intersecting, subtracting, and separating the parts modeling. Union operation requires two or more parts to keep their current position, and union into a union. For example, if we want to create a model of a pencil, we can create a cone and a cylinder in the parts of the game components view. Then adjust their position, orientation, size and other properties. After the placement, select the two parts in the game resources view, and then click the union button in the menu bar. After that a union is generated, this union is the model of the pencil. If you want to cancel the union, you can click the separate button on the menu bar to revert to the pre-union state. The intersect operation is to only keep the parts that overlap with each other. If more than two parts are intersected, then all parts need to overlap, otherwise, the operation will fail by indicating that the intersect result is empty. If you want to cancel the intersection, you can click the separate button in the menu bar. The subtract operation subtracts from the first selected part, where it overlaps with the second selected part, and then retains only the remaining parts from the first part. Note that the subtract operation can only be performed between two parts. To cancel the subtraction, click the separate button on the menu bar. After parts are unioned, intersected, and subtracted, it will generate a union. Union is just like a normal part, you can continue to use these operations. You can modify its physics properties, gravity, collision, color, and material, and you can also use edit trigger. The Align tool is used to adjust the position of the parts, for example, when building a house model, use the Align tool to quickly adjust the position of the walls. Find the Align button on the menu bar and click. You can see the Align tool view appears in the bottom left corner of the editor. The view has three categories, Mode, Align Method, and Align In. The first category, Mode, can be seen on its right side with three options. The first option aligns with the left, the second option aligns with the middle, the third option aligns with the right. So how do we use the Align tool? First, select the part you want to align in the Game Resources view. Then mouse over to the Align tool view below and select one of the options in Mode. At this point, a reminder wall will appear in the scene, indicating that the parts will all move to this position after aligning. After confirming that the alignment is where you want it to be, click the green button in the Align tool view to confirm, and the parts will be aligned. The second category, 
the line in has two options on its right. These two options are used to determine the direction of the coordinate axes. The first option indicates the X, Y, and Z directions using the world coordinates. The second option indicates the X, Y, and Z directions using one of the parts coordinate axes. The world coordinate directions are fixed, just like our north, east, south, and west direction are also fixed. And the directional axes of the part are just like the front and back of us humans. For example, if we select three parts for alignment, if we check the first option for the align in, the effect will look like this. If you select the second option for the align in, the effect will look like this. A different effect has occurred here because the direction of the part's coordinates does not match the direction of the world coordinates. Note that at least one of the X, Y, and Z coordinates must be selected here. If none of them are selected, they will not align after clicking the green button. The third category, the align method, is used to confirm the reference for the alignment. The first option is the range, which refers to all selected parts being seen as a whole group, using this whole group as a reference for alignment. The second option is the object, and it is to use one of the selected parts as a reference for alignment. Click on any part in the scene if you want to use it as a reference. For example, if three parts are placed in the scene, if you select the range, you will see the three parts as a whole, and use this whole as a reference. If you select an object, then one of these parts will be used as a reference. These alignment types can have many different combinations. Please try them out for yourself. Next, we look at the constraint relationships between the parts. Find the small triangle next to the weld button, in the upper menu bar and click. You can see a list of drop-down boxes appearing below, and the list shows the constraint relationships. In this lesson, we will only talk about the three simple constraint relationships, weld, rod, and rope. Weld constraint is a constraint relationship that fixes the relative position of two parts, which welds the parts together. For example, placing a cylinder and cone in the scene. If knocking them over before the weld, these two will fall apart. Now let's add the weld constraints to the two parts. Open the drop-down list of constraint relationships and select weld. Then move the mouse to the scene, you can see there is an anchor point with the mouse movement. Now we click on a part, and an anchor point is fixed to the part. Then click on the other part, so that the two anchor points are fixed on the two parts respectively. The weld constraint of the two parts is now added. After the weld, these two parts will not fall apart anymore after getting knocked over. The effect of the weld is similar to the union, but the union is to combine two parts into one union, whereas the weld is only to make two parts stick together. After the weld the parts are still two individual ones. After the weld, in the game resources view, you can see that under the first selected part, there will be an additional child node called fixet constraint. This child node is the weld constraint. If you want to cancel the constraint relationship, just delete this child node. Rod constraint is to fix the rod between two parts, no matter how one of the parts is being moved, the relative position between the two parts is always the same. After the rod constraint is established between two parts, find the Ropa constraint child node under the connected parts in the game resources view. This child node is the rod connecting the two parts. After clicking on the selected rod, we can modify some properties of the rod in the properties column on the right. When the collision is selected, the rod can collide with another entity. The rod will only show up after you select the visible checkbox. After selecting the fixed at both ends, the relative position of the anchor point and the connected parts will remain unchanged. The rope constraint is to add a rope between two parts, and the parts can move freely as long as the distance between them does not exceed the length of the rope. After creating the rope constraints for both parts, we can also find the rope rope constraint in the game resources view. After clicking on the rope, you can modify some properties of the rope in the right property bar. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official form. See you in the next video.